Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant and I'm the host of Remington Graphics. I'm just going to start this video off by saying sorry for not uploading yesterday. I've been extremely busy lately and I've been trying to do everything, like juggling everything around. So I tried to get something done. Unfortunately, I couldn't because I'm working on about three other projects at the same time. At the same, just it's just a big mess and I'm trying to find my way through it. But anyway, I got a video for you today, so no need to worry. Anyway, earlier today I went ahead and released Procedural Pro 3.0, which has a lot of awesome features that I'm going to go over, and it's a lot more user friendly, so let's go ahead and jump right into it and look at some of those new changes and new features. So when we first open up, we're met with a giant wall of nodes. We've got nine different little nodes over here, this huge node over here, and then we got my PBR shader over here. Now basically what all these are, um, they're just the individual uh, procedurally generated textures that are built into this huge node over here. I just split them up that way if you only want to use one or two of them. It won't lag your computer as much, it'll be a lot faster to render them if you only use these nodes. So if I only wanted to use the moose grave, for example, I would just connect the moose grave color and the moose grave normal. And then it wouldn't have to go through the process of calculating everything else. It would just go straight to the moose grave and it would be done and it wouldn't have to take time out of your day to go ahead and render all the other crap that isn't even appearing in your image. So one thing you'll notice with all these is they're missing the shader port. Er now something you'll notice is that none of the nodes actually have a shader output on them. This is because it really slowed things down and it limited the use of all the different features on the PBR shader because I couldn't connect them to the master node without it being a huge mess. So instead of including it inside of the node, I decided to put it outside and it ended up working just as well as it did before. It actually has a lot more functionality because now you have access to the other features like roughness and offset roughness and also mixing multiple shaders before they go into the PBR shader itself. So just as before, we have some of our basic things. We have Moose Grave, our Mix, our Noise, and then down here we have our Veroni cells. Um, but there are a bunch of new things that I introduced. So we have Magic, Waves Sign, Waves Saw, which technically aren't completely Saw Waves, but I'll go into that later. Um, Veroni Intensity and Checker, which I have no idea who uses Checker. It's, it, I mean, it's not even Checker. I just. I'm sure there's a use for it. I made it just for the heck of it. It's kind of a funky texture though, and I'll show you it in a bit. And then we also have the master node, which contains all of these, um, which once again, this will slow down a lot more than using all of these individually. But if you feel like it, you can use this um, in whatever situation you feel like. And then we also have my PVR shader over here. But let's go ahead and look at some of these new materials and some of the changes to old materials. So Moosegrave, Mix, Noise, and Veroni cells are for the most part the same. Um, actually, these three are exactly the same. But what I did do with the Veroni cells here, let's connect these to the color and this to the normal, is you'll notice that the normals are actually fixed. Previously, when you plugged in the normals, it made these really nasty, bulgy spots. Like, nothing would be divoted except for these very specific points so I went ahead and fixed that and it looks a lot nicer now it looks a lot more normal and it doesn't it, it actually matches the texture as opposed to just sticking out like a sore thumb um, so that's one of the quick changes it was more of a fix from the previous version then we also have this magic texture oops did not want to drag that with magic um, for those of you that don't know magic is a texture in blender if we connect it we get this really neat um, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's like a kind of a wave texture with a pattern in between. Uh, this would be good for making some sort of uh, stamping on a brick or something, or some sort of very minimal decal. And then just as before, we can change things like distortion. So if we really want it distorted, we can change that up to five or, oops, apparently that didn't register. Oops, num lock isn't on, that's why it didn't register. So five, you can see it really screws it up and makes it look all twisty and magic -y, I guess. <laughs> Next up we have the sine waves, which if, oops, so if we connect the color to the color and the normal to the normal, you'll notice that we get these things that look, well, like waves, sine waves, and I have a bit of distortion on these. If we change it to zero distortion, you can see it becomes these perfect waves, but I actually really like it with distortion because it almost looks like rows on a farm field, and I live in the middle of Illinois where there's just cornfields everywhere, and that looks exactly like a cornfield. It could also be like tire tracks in the mud or something, or perhaps um, maybe scratches, but that's a little bit far-fetched. If you do a little bit of work with it, you can make it look like scratches. And then we also have the saw waves down here, which are partially saw, partially sine, as you can see there, it's got the sine wave pattern, but then it's got the saw waves um, color mapping. So it's 
like a sine wave in terms of where it happens, but then the color and bump are based off of the saw. And the reason I did this is because when you just have it saw, it looks like, I don't even know how to describe it. It looks glitchy. That's, that's what it looks like. And whereas this looks kind of like something that got layered over itself, perhaps waves coming in and crashing on a shore. So that would be good use for this. Um, and of course you can always change the things too, like distortion. If we boost that up to five, it becomes a lot more distorted and we can change color and stuff just as we could before. Let's go ahead and disconnect these now. And now let's go ahead and look at Veroni intensity. And if you know what Veroni cells looks like, we took a look at it earlier. Veroni intensity is basically just a very hardened version of that. And this is good for creating some sort of texture, like a tactile rubber texture or something like that. Or um, perhaps if you have like different spots in a uh, slab of granite, you could use just the color node and you can get those really sharp, um, almost mineral like, uh, textures in there. And then we have checker, which checker is the funky one, which I'm sure somebody has a use for. If anybody finds a good use for this, please tell me. Um, it's basically just a bunch of checker textures mixed on top of each other and they end up making these really abstract shapes. So this looks a little bit funky right now, but if we bump up the texture size to 10, you'll notice that we can really see the checker now. Um, and I guess these really funky patterns going and it's different on every single mesh you try it on. Since this is a circular mesh, it kind of has these circular or circles on it. Um, it all depends on the type of mesh you're using. If we boost this up to maybe 50, you'll notice that it just, it just really gets weird. It's all weird and distorted, but I'm sure there's some use for it somewhere. Um, if anybody does have a use for this, please tell me. I'd like to know. Um, I'm just genuinely curious as to what the uses could be. And now over here we have our master node. And our master node is pretty much every single node you see here packed into one giant cluster. And they're sorted alphabetically, so you can see checkers at the top, magic, mix, all the way down to Veroni intensity, which is the last. Um, all these do the same exact things that these do, it's just combined into one big hefty node. So if I wanted to use mix color, for example, and the wave saw fac, um, oh wait, not the fac is normal, the normal as the normal. Now you can see we have the texture from the mixed color and the normal for that mixed in. And also I'm going to share a really quick tip that I figured out with this. Say I wanted to make like a really, really, really random texture. So I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and drag it up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this moose grave texture right here. So I just press shift D to duplicate that. I'm also going to add in a sign. And I'm also going to add in a Veroni texture. All right. And I'm just going to choose some colors for these to mix. I'm going to make this somewhat dirt like. All right. So there's that. And we're going to plug the color from this one into the one of the waves colors. And we're going to choose this one and we're going to choose a couple different colors. This one's going to be maybe this kind of vibrant green, that green and a brown. I'll plug that into the secondary color and now if we give an output over here and we use the normal from this one we get these really cool it's like it's, it's kind of hard to explain but let me boost up the texture scale here a little bit basically what it's doing is it's mixing the moose grave texture as the base color of the sign over here actually i think this one's connected in the wrong spot nope that was connected in the right spot in my bed i'll connect this in both spots actually and um so basically it ends up using three different procedurally generated textures to generate another procedurally generated texture, which I think is really cool. It comes out looking really weird and really awesome. Like this almost looks like some sort of strange mineral you'd find at the very bottom of a cave. Um, but it's a really neat technique that I figured out um, that you can do to using this and you can use all sorts of different combinations with these. You can plug these into a magic shit or a magic texture. You can plug these into a noise texture. You can plug these into a checker texture. I'm curious what that looks like. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, it looks strange, as expected. But anyway, that's just some of the things that you can do with Procedural Pro 3.0. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with it. There's a bunch of different new options for shaders and stuff like that that you can go ahead and experiment with. You can go ahead and try and use different shaders for different things. I encourage you to go ahead and try it out. And if you guys ever create anything with Procedural Pro, I'd love to see it. Just tweet to me on Twitter or something because it's just awesome seeing what you guys create, especially when I know I help contribute to it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Once again, sorry for the late upload. I'm trying to get back on top of it with school and everything. It's just a you get the idea anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you guys later adios